if you want to get really fancy and do a process that takes forever, try <laughs> rabbit skin glue. Okay. <laughs> You've sold rabbit me. skin glue is basically a sizing that you apply to the canvas. And so this does what gesso does, which is it actually stretches the canvas and makes it nice and flat. So you can see it's like a drum. Yeah. And it's really tight. Yeah. I find That's with gesso wild. that sometimes it's not quite that tight, mm -hmm. but with rabbit skin glue, it's really taut. So that's one of the reasons I like it so much. And can you paint right on top of this? I guess technically you could, because mm -hmm. this does act as a barrier between the paint and the canvas. But I actually tried that once when I was in art school and I just didn't like the way it felt. It was mm. like really coarse and it didn't, it was hard to spread paint on it. And yeah. I found that challenging. The rabbit skin glue by itself is not enough. You also have to add oil primer on top of the rabbit skin glue after it's dried. Because this is basically oil paint, but a lot thicker, you can only use this for oil paint. This is not a technique you can use for acrylic paint because you cannot put acrylic paint over oil paint. The whole thing about rabbit skin glue is that when you mix a batch of it, you have to use it right then and there. You mm -hmm. can't mix it, let it sit overnight, and then use it again. So for that reason, I generally like to do a whole bunch of canvases all at once. So I'll maybe stretch six canvases and then do all rabbits can glue, and it's just, it makes so much more sense. Okay. Like, yeah. you don't want to mix up a whole batch of rabbits can glue and only use, like, a quarter of it and then just cover one canvas. It seems like kind of a waste. Yeah. So if you so. leave rabbit skin glue overnight, you can see huh. it just turns into jello. <laughs> oh, and you awful. should never reheat this. If you tried to reheat this, number one, it wouldn't work. Number two, I bet it would smell disgusting. Okay. So <laughs> once once it turns to jello, you just toss it <laughs> at that point. But again, that's an argument for using it up. To create rabbit skin glue, you need to follow the recipe that's on the back of the bag, mm -hmm. you have to use the precise recipe. Because when I was in art school, I was lazy and I would just dump whatever amount into the water. And what happened was I probably applied way too much. And so my canvases literally cracked within a month. Wow. Yeah, it was oh really, really bad. Okay. So make sure you follow this because if you don't, you're end, gonna end up with really bad paintings. So this says six tablespoons of rabbit skin glue, which is a powder to a quart of water. I actually am gonna mix a smaller amount. If you wanna do the math, it ends up being one and a half tablespoons to a cup of water. I've got my pot of boiling water and I'm gonna pour a cup of it into here. And then you wanna pour the water into another container like that. This should not be a container that you ever want to use again. So you should <laughs> feel free to toss it when you're all done because it's disgusting. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the rabbit skin glue and I do think it's useful to have a tablespoon that just goes in the bag. You don't want to mix that with it. No, and it's just a pain because then you're going to mix like, where's the tablespoon measure? It's much easier this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna take the rabbit skin glue. I'm gonna get a full tablespoon. The key thing is when you add it to the water, you want to add it just a little bit at a time. You mm -hmm. don't want to just dump it in because you're going to end up with a big blob of it and the inside of it will still be dry. Okay. So you want to do it really slowly. So I just shake in a little bit at a time like this and you can just take your bristle brush. The rabbit skin glue should go on pretty thin. You don't want it to go on super thick and you definitely don't want lumps. So I always make sure when I'm mixing it that I'm really pressing down towards the bottom because sometimes you'll get like chunks of it and it's sort of gross. This is linen and so you can see the linen is turning like dark brown. Um, but if you use just like regular canvas, it'll just be clear. You won't be able to see it. Rabbit skin glue can be hard to see on regular canvas and you gotta make sure you cover everything. Also, your oil paint will go through and it will eat your linen. So it smells really bad. Is this like one of the, I know oil paints can sometimes have toxic natures. Mm -hmm. Is this a bad thing to smell? Should you be careful, no. ventilated? This is fine. I mean, it does smell a little gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this is not really something you want to sit around and sniff all day, uh -huh. but it's not toxic the way say like mineral spirits are. But if the smell bothers you, just pop open the windows, it's fine. <laughs> 
And so if you touch this, do you feel it already oh, getting already, taut? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not gonna stay that taut, but it's going to be pretty tight. Now you want to remember, of course, to not forget to paint all the edges, just like that. And what I do with the Ravis King glue is I definitely let it dry overnight mm -hmm. because sometimes it feels like it's dry, but it isn't really. So I just don't want to risk it, and I always let it dry overnight. And you only use one layer, right? That's it, yeah. You only need one layer. So you said the rabbit skin glue like dries and hardens and you can't use it again. What about cleanup for the rest of it? Can you use this brush again, or is that... Hard? Absolutely. Just oh, take okay. the brush, put it in the sink, rinse it out. Should be totally fine to use again. Awesome. You don't, however, want to just leave it on the table, because if you don't wash it, this is then gonna get super stiff and then you won't be able to use the brush again. Now the Rapid Skin Glue has dried overnight and I'm ready to apply the oil primer. The oil primer comes in this big jug and you can see it's a resealable lid, but you have to make this absolutely tight when you close it. So it's not enough to just press down. You actually have to take a hammer and tap it into place. Wow, what happens if it's loose? it all dries out oh. <laughs> and it's horrible because oil primer is not cheap. Yeah. Even for a jug like this, it's quite a lot. And sometimes if the top part of it dries and you got to like scrape it all out, you end up losing like a quarter of it. It's just very sad. <laughs> so, so it sounds like this whole process is like varsity level oil painting, right? Yeah, like this times is... like a hundred. <laughs> okay, so like this is like if you found you love oil painting yes. and you want to take it to the next level. And all spend right. a ton of money at it at the same time. <laughs> so in theory, because this is so, um, so tight, you actually have to take a screwdriver to open it like this. Like you can't just pull this off with your hands if yeah. you put it in with a hammer and then eventually you can peel it out like this. You'll also notice that there probably is gonna be a piece of paper here mm -hmm. that comes with your actual primer. And the reason why is because if you don't have this here with a little bit of linseed oil to make it a bit lubricated, this top layer will just dry no matter mm. what, no matter how thickly you put this on. Oh, because this is essentially like the same material as oil paint, really. It's yeah, just... except it's really stiff mm, and it's okay. not juicy the way that oil paint is. Mm -hmm. So you have to take this piece of paper and take it off. Oil primer is really messy. I really don't recommend just using your bare hands. I always, always use gloves. Mm -hmm got my gloves on. Now I am ready to take my palette knife and start spreading this across the surface of the rabbit skin glue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to have two palette knives. So I'll have one to dig out of here and then I'll have one to spread. The key thing about the oil primer is you don't want to gouge the oil primer. Like you don't want to like dig a little hole into it. You want to keep this top surface nice and flat so then when you put the paper on top, it fits really nicely. So maintenance is really important for something like this. Hmm. Okay. All right, so you take the oil primer and you don't want it thick. You're if you put there. it on thick, it's terrible. <laughs> and it will take like two years to dry. So you don't want to do that. Um, so I just put a little here. I just spread it with this one a little bit. And then I really like this long palette knife because you can just do this. Oh, awesome. So the long palette knife is really nice for that. And you can see it's sticky, like it's not easy yeah. to put on. You do have to be pretty patient. And I think what stinks is if you don't take care of it, you're gonna end up with little bits of dried oil paint in there. Mm. And then you get like little flakes in the oil primer, which is not fun. <laughs> So oil paint takes a long time to dry. How about this stuff? How long do you have to let this set before you can start painting? I would say give it two weeks to be on two the safe weeks. side. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want it to be even a little wet. That would be really a bad situation. <laughs> so I'm just always really conservative. But basically when it's dry to the touch, it's ready to go. Cool. And so since this process is so much more involved and with so much more expensive materials than mm -hmm. regular gesso, what are some of the benefits of going this route? Oil primer is just beautiful to paint on. Mm -hmm. It's just like, um, 
I don't know, it, it's one of those things, like once you've painted on oil primer, you can't go back to gesso. <laughs> it, it's just like the gesso feels like plastic to me. Uh -huh. And this is just really, really sensitive as mm -hmm. a surface. And I mean, it makes sense if you're gonna paint in oil, if you have an oil ground, it is more similar. So you can see here, there's little flakes of dried paint in there mm -hmm. and you can just scrape those out, which is not a problem. And it's also important, I think, to scrape in different directions because if you only scrape in one direction, you're in trouble. You're probably looking at this thinking, God, why would anybody do this? Oh. <laughs> Your words, not mine. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Once I'm getting close to really covering the whole thing, I like to really scrape my palette knife super clean. Mm -hmm. And I just do like a basic scraping over the whole thing. Because again, you don't want oil primer to be thick. You want it to be really thin. And so this final scraping, I find it just gets rid of extra little spots mm -hmm. that you don't want and then also clean up your edges a little bit as well. Do you see how there's extra oil primer that's sort of sticky and gross on yeah. the edge of the canvas? What I like to do is I just take a cotton rag and I just make it smooth like this. It's just a little thing. I mean, it's not required. You can certainly get away with not doing this, but I just feel like it looks nicer. Hmm. It makes it so your edges. And you don't have to put the oil primer all on the edge of the paint? No, actually you don't. Oh. You don't want to do that because the Raviskin glue is protecting those edges from the oil paint. Oh, awesome. The oil primer is the same thing as oil paint. If there is no Raviskin glue, the oil primer would eat through the canvas. Okay. But this is one of the few surfaces where you don't want to paint the sides with mm. the oil primer. And so then when you're all finished, you let it sit for two weeks and then it's perfectly dry and you're ready to go. When you're closing up the oil primer, first of all, you want to take a palette knife and make this top part as flat and smooth as you can. Okay. Because that just makes it easier to put the paper on top. And what I like to do as well, is just pour like maybe just a little drop or two of linseed oil. And I just take my finger wearing a glove, of course, and I just dab the linseed oil all over the entire surface of the oil primer. And so the linseed oil is a nice lubricant so that when I put the paper on top, next time I open it up, the paper just peels right off. Because I could put this in right now, but you can see I didn't do it before. So now you see the oil primer, but now you can take this, stick it inside, press it down. This will prevent a dried out area from forming. I'm gonna take this. Stick it in. Your oh. hammer? Yeah, I you do it. <laughs> you tap the edge. Good. Oh. And now it's ready to go. 